Hello and welcome. Today is 1st December 2020 and we are discussing rational numbers. Specifically, we will talk about properties of rational numbers and the property that we are discussing today is closure. We will learn about this property in context of whole numbers, in the context of integers and finally overall rational numbers. So let's get started. So let's talk about closure property for whole numbers. We know whole numbers is simply a collection of numbers that start from zero and they go zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way to plus infinity. This collection of numbers, we know them as whole numbers. Now let's talk about the different operations. So we add two numbers. So what happens if we add any two whole numbers? So let's randomly write two whole numbers, maybe the number two and number five. When we add them, what do we get? But, well, 2 plus 5 is 7. So we add one whole number to another whole number and we get a whole number. Let's try out one more example. Maybe let's take the number 0 and let's say maybe the number 12. When we add them, we get 12. So again, we have one whole number. We add another whole number to it and the answer is another whole number. So we say that whole numbers is closed under addition. Now let's talk about subtraction. So let's take whole number 5 and let's subtract the number 2 from it. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So here we have a whole number. We subtract the number 2 which is a whole number from 5 and we get 3. But what happens if we reverse the, the order here? Meaning let's take the whole number 2 and let's say we subtract the whole number 5 from it. In this case what is the answer? Answer is minus 3. So here we see this, is this a whole number? This is not in our collection. So this is not a whole number. So what we have here is for this scenario, we are getting a whole number when we subtract one whole number from another. But in this case, we are not getting a whole number. So it really depends. So we say that the whole numbers are not closed under subtraction meaning we cannot guarantee the outcome that whenever we subtract one whole number from another that we will always get a whole number. So this was an example for addition. This is an example for subtraction. Now let's do multiplication. Let's take two whole numbers. Maybe let's take the number 3 and let's say we multiply by number 10. So what happens here? Well, we get 30. So we have a whole number, we have a whole number and we get a whole number as a product. Now let's take maybe the number 5, one more example, times 6, and here we get 30 again. So we see that when we multiply two whole numbers, we always get a whole number. So we say that for multiplication, the, the whole numbers are closed under multiplication. Now let's do division. So let's say now we want to divide one whole number by another whole number. So let's take the number 6 in numerator and we divide this by 2. So what happens in this case? Well, we know that this will be simply the number 3. So here we have taken one whole number and we are dividing that by another whole number and we do get a whole number. But what again happens here if we reverse the order the way we did for subtraction? So we put the number 2 in numerator, divide this by 6. Well, this will be simply 2 3s. So this will get as 1 times 1 over 3. Now, is this a whole number? This is not a whole number. So like subtraction, for division, we cannot guarantee when we divide one whole number by another that we will always get a whole number. So we say that the we say that for whole numbers are not closed under division. Now let's move on to check out the closure property for integers. Now we know what are integers. Integers start from minus infinity go dot dot dot, then we have minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, the number 0, and then the number 1, 2, 3, dot dot dot, all the way to plus infinity. This collection of numbers, we know them as integers. Now, let's repeat our operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division for two integers and see what do we get. So, let's say we take our first integer as minus 3 and we add, let's say, 5 to it. So this is an integer, this is an integer. So what is the result? Well, this is simply five minus three, which is two. So we see that when we add two integers, we get an integer. Let's check out one more example, maybe minus 10 
and let's add say minus 5 to it. So this is an integer, this is an integer and we are simply adding two integers and the answer here is minus 15 which is again an integer. So we notice that whenever we add two integers we always get an integer. So we say that integers are closed under addition. Now what about subtraction? So let's take again the same example. So here we have minus 3 and we subtract 5 from it. So what do we get? Well minus 3 minus 5 is simply minus 8. So we start with an integer, we subtract an integer from it and we get an integer. One more example, let's take the integer 0 and we subtract let's say minus 10 from it. So what do we get? So this we can write this as 0 minus minus 10 or 0 plus 10 or 10. So again when we subtract two integers we always get an integer. So we say that integers are closed under subtraction. Right? Now let's talk about multiplication. So let's say we have the integer 2, we multiply this by minus 5. So what do we get here? Well we get minus 10. Let's take two more, uh, let's take one more example. So maybe the number 2 times let's say uh, maybe 8. Clearly this will be 16. Uh, how about if we take two negative integers and multiply them? So something like maybe, let's do it over here, say minus 5 times minus 8. What happens when we do this? Well, minus minus becomes plus, we get 40. So in all these cases, when we multiply two integers, we are always getting an integer. So we say that for multiplication, integers are closed under multiplication. What about division? Let's take two integers. Let's say we have minus 10 and we divide this by say minus 2. So when we do this division, minus minus cancels out. We have 10 over 2 or simply 5. So in this case, we have taken two integers, we have divided them and we are getting an integer. But like uh, if you were to reverse the order, what happens here? Meaning we have taken minus 2 and we divide this by minus 10. Clearly this will become 2 by 10 or 1 over 5 which is not, this is not an integer, right? This number doesn't exist here in this collection. So we say that integers are not closed under division. So we notice, let's quickly sum this up. So for addition, we saw that uh, the integers were closed under addition. For subtraction, they were closed. For multiplication here, they were closed. But when it comes to division, they are not closed. Finally, let's move on to rational numbers more generically. We know what are rational numbers. Any number that can be written in the form of p by q, where both p, q are integers, but the denominator q is not equal to 0, we call these numbers rational numbers. Examples, 2 by 3, minus 5 by 8. Even we know that the whole numbers, like for example, 3 is a rational number because we can write it in this form. And similarly, all integers, say minus uh, 10, they are all rational numbers because all of the integers can be written in this form, right? Now, let's review the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division for rational numbers. So let's arbitrarily write two rational numbers. Maybe let's write 2 by 3 and let's add another rational number with it. So 2 by 3 plus, let's say, maybe 4 by 5. So what happens when we add two rational numbers? Well, here we will convert the denominators to the same number. So we can write this as 3 times 5, and this will become 2 times 5. And then we will add this here. So for this rational number, we can multiply both numerator and denominator by 3. So we will get it like this. So this the first one will become 10 over 15 plus 12 over 15. Now we have same denominator, we can write this as 15 and we'll simply add these two which will be 10 plus 12 which will be 22. So here we have taken two rational numbers and we are getting another rational number. Now you can try this out, when we add two rational numbers we will always get a rational number. So we say that rational numbers are closed under addition. Now let's do the subtraction and see what happens. So if you were to take the same example or let's do this, this time let's take a rational number like this and let's subtract maybe the number 1 from it and see what happens. 
So again, one can be written as like this, right? So these are all rational numbers. So here, this will become 2 minus 3 over 3, or this will be minus 1 by 3. Minus 1 by 3 is a rational number. So we will notice that whenever we subtract one rational number from another, we get a rational number. So we say that rational numbers are closed under subtraction. What happens when we multiply two rational numbers? So let's say we have 2 over 3 times maybe say, uh, let's say 12 over maybe 14. What happens here? So in this case, simply, well, this will cancel out here like this. And 2 ones are 2 and 2 7 is 14. So this will become 4 over 7. So we notice that when we multiply two rational numbers, we are getting a rational number. Maybe one more example, say minus 1, minus 1 by 5, for example, by 3 by maybe 8. I am randomly writing these examples. So here, minus 1 times 3 will be minus 3. And we divide them uh, by 5 times 8, which will be 40. So this is a rational number, this is a rational number, this is a rational number. So we see that whenever we multiply two rational numbers, we will always get a rational number. So rational numbers are closed under multiplication. Now what about division? Let's, uh, let's uh, maybe uh, clear this up a little bit here. Now let's say, here we, what we do is, so let's take two rational numbers, so 2 by 3, and we divide this by, let's say, the number 5, or 5 by 1. So in this case, we can write this as 2 by 3 divided by 5 by 1, or we can write this as 2 by 3 times 1 over 5. We know that in the case like this, we multiply these two and we multiply these two. So this can simply be written as 2 times 1 by 3 times 5, or here this will be 2 over 15. So we start with one rational number, multiply another rational number to it, and we are getting a rational number. Divide, I mean. So we see that when we divide two rational numbers, seems like we will always get a rational number. However, there is one unique exception to this rule. What about if we take the rational number, let's say uh, 5 by 7, and we divide this by 0? What happens then? Remember, 0 is a rational number, because 0 can be written as this, and this is a rational number. So what happens here? Well, this becomes 5 by 7 multiplied by 1 over 0, or simply 5 by 0. And what is this? Is this a rational number? This is not. Because we, whenever we have zero in the denominator, it becomes undefined. So we will always get a rational number when we divide two rational numbers, except if we use zero, if we divide a rational number by zero, because in that case, zero comes to the denominator and it becomes, the entire rational number becomes undefined. So let's quickly sum this up. So for whole numbers, what did we see? So Whole numbers are closed under addition. Whole numbers are not closed under subtraction. Whole numbers are closed under multiplication. They are not closed under division. For integers, they are closed under addition, subtraction, multiplication, but not under division. And finally, for rational numbers, we see that for addition, subtraction, multiplication, they are closed. And for division, they are almost closed, but not quite because of zero. If we divide by zero, the number becomes undefined.